Hey everyone, it's Kim, the Homeschooling Grammy. Today, I thought it would be fun to share with you this series of bedtime math. These are really super fun. Stick around, we're about to get started. first book in the series, The Bedtime Math, A Fun Excuse to Stay Up Late. So what I'm going to do basically is I'm just going to kind of show you how it works. Um, so this is the first one of its in the series. This one is the second one, Bedtime Math 2. This time it's personal. And then the next book is Bedtime Math, The Truth Comes Out. And so far, Poppy and Hope are really enjoying doing these books together. So I'm going to flip the camera around so that you can take a look inside just to see how bright and colorful these books really are. Okay, so now I'm just going to give you a quick look. As you can see, this is the book that we are currently reading with Hope in the Evening. Um, and she is really, really enjoying this book so far. Um, okay, so let's just take a look inside. It just makes math really, really fun. over there we go so you'll notice this book's a little crinkly and whatever that's because it is used I got it from thrift books because um, I'm all about trying to save if I can, possibly can so here it gives you the introduction what is bedtime math how did bedtime math get started the book and the levels um, have no fear and one more thing so I will go ahead and I will just read some of this to you. Um, we all know parents should read to their kids at bedtime, but what about math? Just as reading at home teaches kids to love books, introducing math at home should teach kids to love math too. Bedtime math's goal is simple, to make math a fun part of kids' everyday lives, not just something found only in homework assignments. Math should be a be as beloved as the bedtime story. And that's exactly what it does. It just makes it super fun. And then it explains to you how to do bedtime math the fun way. Don't sweat it. It's an activity. It's not a test. Don't worry. Don't sweat it. Part two. Any time of day can work. So it doesn't have to be a bedtime. You can use this anytime. You could put it in your morning basket. For those of you who homeschool and like to do morning baskets, this would be fun. Um, stretch. And it's beautiful. So chapter one, exploding flood. So here's a little story. So it tells you a little story here and I'll give you an example. I'll go through one of the stories. Hot, hot, hot. If you've ever bitten into one of those little green bits in a bowl of salsa, you know how hot they can taste. Whoa, they are jalapenos, but they don't even come close to being the hottest peppers out there. The Scoville scale for hotness runs from zero into the millions, and on that scale, jalapenos rank only at 3,500. Habanero peppers score 350,000, and some pe peppers actually crack 1 million. If you, if you like feeling as if you might explode, there's no end to the level of hot you can taste test. So then it gives levels for your child. There's a level, the wee ones level, the little kids level, and a big kids level. So depending on where your child is would depend on which question um, you can do with your child. But we have been doing, we've been doing all three with Hope um, because it makes it fun for her because, you know, she automatically gets the wee ones correct. And that just gives her some confidence building and it just makes the whole experience fun. But here's an example. If you've eaten three bites of jalapeno and you know you can eat eight bites of them before you just can't take the heat anymore, how many more bites can you stand to eat? And then the little kids level. If the black pepper you sprinkle on food along with salt ranks just 2,500 for hotness and the jalapeno scores a 3,500, how many points hotter is the jalapeno? And for big kids, if the jalapeno scores 3,500 and Tabasco sauce scores 35,000, how many times hotter than the jalapeno 
is the Tabasco sauce. So there you have an, kind of an idea of how it goes. So there's all kinds of questions going through here. I'll just kind of flip through for you. And this is where they are right now. The IQ second rule, or the 10 second rule, sorry. <laughs> oh goodness, I'm glad I have new glasses coming. And then chapter two is wild pets. So this will definitely be one of Hope's favorites because she's all about animals. Chapter three is extreme vehicles. Chapter four is sports you shouldn't try at home. Chapter five is really odd jobs. And so the last one in here is called For the Dogs. Um, if the dog walker picks up two poodles at the first home, three beagles at the second home, and a large mutt at the third, how many dogs is he or she walking in total? So that's the wee ones question. The little kids is, if a dog walker has 10 dogs but has leashes to walk only four dogs at a time, how many trips does it take to walk all the dogs? And the big question, the big kid question is, the dog walker has to walk 40 dogs today, which is pretty much impossible to begin with. To top it off, half of the dogs want to fetch balls, another one-fifth of them want to play frisbee, and three others want to eat dog treats. How many dogs actually want to walk like they're supposed to? So you see the questions have gotten increasingly more difficult. And then here in the very back of the book gives you the title of the story, it gives you all of the answers for each level. So here is the second book. And I'm just going to quickly, I'm not going to flip through every page like I did the other one. It gives the same introduction in the beginning. The how to use it. Um, and chapter one is what's in you. So you're talking about teeth. Those kinds of things. So I'll give you an example from the first story. You're talking about stick people. Um, each of your fingers has three bones, but each toe has only two. Which one has more bones, your finger or your toe? Um, little kids, you were born without real kneecaps. They start out mushy and don't harden until age four or five. If you have three babies and two grown-ups in the room, how many real kneecaps are there? Each person has two legs, but only some kneecaps count. Big kids, your thumb is actually your longest finger. It has three bones like the others, but the third bone is hidden in your hand. How many bones do your fingers on your one hand have in total? And then this has a bonus question. We're all born with more bones than we end up with, since many bones grow together over time. If you started with 350 bones and now have 206, how many more did you start with? And then I'll go to the end of here, to the last... thing is through the roof. This wee one's question is, if you jump eight times while counting, what number comes next? Little kids, if you're three feet tall and your arm can reach one foot above you and you can jump two feet high off the floor, how high can you reach at the peak of your jump? Big kids, if you're 50 inches tall and stand on a 10 inch chair and you reach 20 inches above your head and jump 20 inches, can you touch your eight foot high ceiling? Remember, there are 12 inches and one foot. And the bonus question for this is, that nursery rhyme says that the cow jumps over the moon, which is about 240,000 miles away. If a cow could jump two miles high, how many miles higher would it have to jump to clear the moon? 
And then once again, um, the equation chart, the math behind all of the fun. So it gives you all of the answers to everything that you did in the book. So the last book in the series that we have, and I'm not sure if there's more than three or not, but these are the three that I have. Bedtime, The Truth Comes Out. Once again, I'm not going to go ahead and I'll just skip by all of the initial stuff because it is pretty much the same. Your introduction, um, how to do it, etc. Um, so this is a really super fun page. You can see our marshmallow is really good for you. He came up with popsicles. Our banana is really a fruit. Is there really an onion town? So all kinds of fun little trivia questions in there. So the very first story is ice cream for all, even astronauts. Do astronauts really eat astronaut ice cream? So the question here for the little ones is if you're counting up your astronaut ice cream ingredients, coconut fat, Coconut fat, sugar, milk fat, and chocolate. What numbers do you say? If you chow down three packs of chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, astronaut, ice cream, how many stripes did you eat in total? Big kids, if an astronaut unwrapped six ounces each of moon pint, planet peanut butter, and starry swirl, but four ounces crumble and start floating around, how much is left? Bonus, if your rocket launches at 11.58 a.m. and by 1 11 p.m. you just have to eat some astronaut ice cream how long did you wait and then we'll kind of skip through i'll kind of do one of these and kind of get an idea i just love the illustrations the books are just super super fun and we're all about the books anyways we love reading so let's go to the back here and take a look at the very last little story in the back. It's time for change. How many ways can you make change for a dollar? So the wee ones, how many pennies can you count on this page? For the little kids, how many dimes does the store need to give you to make 20 cents of change? Big kids, if you have one a piece of the five coins, a penny, a nickel, a dime, a quarter, and a half dollar, how much are they worth altogether? Bonus, how many ways can you use dimes, nickels, or both to buy some 50 cent blinking glow in the dark shoelaces? And then again, in the back, you will see the equation chart. So all the math behind the fun. And there you okay, have well, it. There you have it. No, I'm not sponsored. I'm not any of those things. I just thought it would be really fun to share these books with you because when you have a child that isn't really in love with math in general you'll do anything to try to make it more fun and that's exactly what these books are doing for us so god bless take care and i'll talk to you again in the next video